Oh man, so this is one of those kinds of hacks that if you know a little bit about systems and cybersecurity, you might start to crap your pants upon reading a title that says AirGap systems can leak data via their SATA cables. Because AirGap systems, they're generally thought of as some of the most secure systems in the world. They aren't connected to any networks, or maybe they'll be connected to an isolated network that is physically separated from the internet, like we see in SCADA networks, where maybe you have industrial equipment or systems that make up a power grid that can talk to one another, but not the rest of the internet, because that would be really stupid. And they also are going to have all their wireless technologies removed, so no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, no LTE, nothing like that. The only way that you can exfiltrate data or hack an air gap system would be to insert a USB stick to copy files to it or deploy a virus to the system from that USB stick like the NSA did with Stuxnet to attack the Iranian nuclear program. Or maybe you could take a picture of the screen, the computer screen through a window if the data that you need is being displayed that way. Or I guess you could use a SATA cable in the victim's PC as an antenna and then transfer the data wirelessly that way, like some kind of ad hoc Wi-Fi antenna, assuming that you've already compromised the device. It's very important to point that out. But because air gap systems are considered so inherently secure, oftentimes they don't get as many security updates or security audits. And the security practices in general around these kinds of systems are much laxer. So if you can manage to do that initial pwnage of these kinds of systems, the likelihood of your malware being removed is actually gonna be a lot lower than a normal PC that connects to the internet. So here we've got a video from cybersecurity labs at Ben Gurion University demonstrating this hack. So we've got the victim's PC here, which is air gapped. And then we've got the attacker's PC here. The attacker, funny enough, is running Windows 10 and the victim is running Ubuntu. So the victim just typed in his secret message there. And now that is being transmitted over a SATA cable wirelessly to the attacker. He's receiving the message. And there, now he has it displayed on his screen. So now it's time to panic, right? We have to throw away all of our electronics and go become Amish or maybe run out to the grocery store and buy some tin foil and wrap our PCs in it. That's always the answer, right? Well, unironically, that could be a mitigation technique for a problem like this. Uh, so here we have the actual write-up of the attack and I'll leave a link to this in the description below if you want to learn more about it. Um, but I'm just going to just basically explain what's going on here. So all of the data on your computer is ultimately reduced to zeros and ones. Doesn't matter whether it's data going over the network or data being swapped between your RAM and your CPU or data that's on your disk, it's all zeros and ones. And those zeros and ones, they go through different levels of abstraction and encoding to ultimately get turned into a JPEG or a document or a set of instructions being sent to your graphics card to render something. Now, typically, these zeros and ones flow as electrical signals over a copper cable or gold or some other type of metal. Uh, just think about all the copper that's in your ethernet cable, SATA cable, copper embedded in your motherboard. The ones, are represented by high voltage or the presence of voltage at all and then the zeros are represented by low voltage or no voltage but this data could also be represented as light so if the light is on that's a one if it's off that's a zero and that's actually how fiber optic cables work at a very basic level but it could also be possible to transmit data over something like the LEDs, one of the many LEDs that are on today's computers. So if you've already pwned the system, but you don't have network access to exfiltrate data, you could just cause one of the computer's LEDs to light up and transfer sensitive data. On means one, off means zero, or hell, I guess with an LED, you could even use Morse code if it's text that you're trying to transmit. That would actually be even faster. 
So it's possible to transfer data in some unconventional ways, right? You could do the same thing with audio. In fact, if you're on a Linux system right now, you could use the command a play dev mem to play the contents of your RAM through your PC speakers. Now, it actually would be very difficult to recover data this way because you would have to record the outputted audio into a microphone and then that's gonna be picking up some background noise and it's probably gonna change the frequencies around a little bit. But the point is, data can be represented and transferred in all sorts of ways, even on an air gap system. So now, how do you turn a SATA cable into a radio antenna? Well, it turns out literally any piece of metal can act as an antenna. And if you put any amount of electricity through a piece of metal, it's going to give off some electromagnetic signals, which again, those can be used to encode data. So every time your disk does a read or a write, it's giving off some radio signals. And malware can be used to create some very specific read and write functions that give off very specific radio waves containing specific sensitive data. And that's what the Windows laptop in, uh, in this example video was listening to with one of its radio antennas. So that's how it's able to read this data remotely, okay? There's, there's no cables actually connecting this computer to this computer. So how do we go about mitigating this? Well, for one, you should know that just because it's possible to use SATA cables to broadcast data, that doesn't mean it's very effective. So in this example video, the victim PC and the attacker are on the same desk. And the reason for that is this attack only works from about one meter away. And while I couldn't confirm this, I suspect that the researcher was using a more common unshielded SATA cable uh, instead of something like a shielded SATA cable that has braided aluminum around it like this. Uh, well, actually, I just realized that this is an eSATA cable, but um, there are regular SATA cables like this as well that have the aluminum around them. Now, granted, they are more expensive, right? They're gonna cost about three times as much as your regular SATA cable, but you would think that maybe 10 or $15 SATA cables would be within the budget for you to build one of these really secure air gap systems, especially when you stop to consider how important the information that you might be storing on these is. But even on an unshielded cable like this guy's probably using here, it's still not going to be a very powerful antenna because it's just not designed for that, right? I mean, if think of how an actual radio antenna looks versus this thing. Okay, sure, it's still a piece of metal with electricity flowing through it, but it's only got about 3.3 volts going through it at the most. And the SATA cable is still covered with rubber, which I'm pretty sure is going to insulate it a bit. Uh, it's still going to be inside of a PC case, although in this picture, of course, they have it uh, exposed, but PC case might provide a little bit of shielding. I mean, most PC cases are not built for EMF shielding, uh, but, you know, may be able to reduce it a little bit. Point is in most of these cases where attackers are able to get sensitive data by reading leaked EMF, the attacker usually has to get physically pretty close to the system, or they have to place a device that's able to read this EMF in some way close to the system. Uh, so in an air gap system, you really do want to think about reducing the amount of EMF, and one of the ways that you can do that is by using shielded cables. You could also get a PC case that's designed to block EMF uh, or just literally wrap your PC case in tinfoil. I mean, 54 bucks might be a little bit much to pay for uh, what basically just looks like some kind of veil that's like made with some woven fibers or something like that. Some like woven, you know, metal reflective stuff. You could just wrap your PC in aluminum foil, leave the uh, air vents exposed, you know, your exhaust and your intake so that it doesn't overheat, and you'll basically get the same effect, that it's going to reduce the amount of EMF leaking from inside the computer. Another mitigation technique that this researcher actually talks about in their paper is to install a dedicated driver that 
detects any type of abnormal read-write operations, because ultimately that's how the malware is producing these EMF signals in the first place. And then it's just going to automatically create some like junk to mess up the signal a bit. So you can sort of see examples here where there's a clean signal where it has a very distinct crests and troughs on the wave pattern here. So you could actually use this to encode uh, some data, right? Like ones and zeros at the very least. But then this jam signal is just kind of random and all over the place. So you can't really get anything useful out of that. But the ultimate thing to do, since all of these exfiltration techniques that I'm aware of require you to actually hack the system in the first place, is to just make sure that that doesn't happen, right? To apply better security policies to air gap systems. Because like I said, a lot of people treat them like these impenetrable castles that don't need any audits or security checks done once it's built. But air gap systems still need proper IDS, IPS. They still need updates. They still need regular audits to make sure that they don't have some kind of long con malware installed on them that's waiting to exfiltrate your passwords and your important keys through LEDs in your gaming keyboard or through radio signals that are being sent over SATA cables. Like and comment to hack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.